Unify Network 10 is now a thing and let's just jump straight in and have a look at some of the improvements within Unify Network. We have an extension of the API, improved settings with user experiences and includes improvements and bug fixes below. So we can see we've got improved Wi-Fi, hotspot, network and internet settings, user experience. So we'll have a look at those. There's an improvement to the official network API. So the extended scope now has devices, networks, VLANs, ACLs, basic supporting APIs and improved API filtering options and error reporting. There's some visual changes and some few tweaks to some of the sub menus, which again, we'll have a look at shortly. We have some improved UPS product user experience. So auto recover power cycle, pairing your gateway consoles and improved device shutdown latency. There's an improvement to the dashboard and the big one for a lot of people that I know they're going to be excited about this is the improved IPv6 address reporting and support. We have some site to site validation, application stability. We have some animation improvements some more validation. We have improved topology page filtering and added vendor and device type filtering with them as well. And the big one that you need to know of if you use the legacy UI, it is no longer available for you. When you upgrade to version 10, the legacy UI disappears completely. So keep that one in mind if you still use it before you go and update. So let's have a look at some of these improvements side by side and see what it looks like. First thing I'm going to show you is something you can actually add into your network additionally. So if we go into any network that you have set up, so we've just picked the management network for the time being, and you go down here, you have the option to add additional IPs. Now what this is, is additional IPv4 addresses assigned to this VLAN only the primary gateway is used by the DHCP server. So you may want to add something from a previous subnet or something that you're migrating over and you want to add an additional IP in there. You can do that right here. If we go to the port manager, we actually have some additional information in here now and we can customize columns and add a lot more in here. There's a lot of options that we can add in terms of the columns. If we go into the policy tables now, we now have the pause or remove option. So you can actually pause these quite easily and quickly just straight from the policy table rather than going into it and playing around with it. You can do that right there. We have some improved UPS settings, so you can now pair your gateways if that's what you want to do. You have auto recovery power cycle, briefly cycles the power when the AC is returned during a battery use to restart the connected devices. So a much needed improvement there and it improves paired device shutdown latency. If we look at the clients now, we have a whole bunch of more options that we can filter by. So there's things like the VLANs, the vendors, device type. So there are a whole bunch of different things that you can choose from, really making it a lot easier to find a specific client on your network should you need it. As I went through some of the bits earlier, there's a few validation improvements that have been added into the system. Now, the big one I haven't covered yet is IPv6. So there's improved address reporting and support for this, which I think a lot of people have been screaming for. But here we are. We do have it. I have finally actually managed to get around to implementing IPv6 on my network. I currently have a static IPv6 address. So we have SLAAC, which comes from the ISP and DHCPv6. That, will, that also comes from the ISP. So you can choose any of those. We have prefix delegation size in here. I'm not claiming to be an IPv6 expert. So if there's something I've missed, let me know down in the comments below. When you select on the WAN ISP, you now have a pop-out box and we have all the information on here. The final setting within here you want to have a look at is the auto DNS server. So you can tick or untick that. I've actually unticked it and used an IPv6 DNS server. Uh, this is a Cloudflare one, but you can choose whatever you're happy with. You can choose something your ISP gives you, or you can choose this right here. Another improvement is you now have the IPv6 subnet on here as well. So it shows you what subnet is there and you can obviously there's a quick copy button so you don't have to write down all the digits, which is very useful when it comes to IPv6 because it is hex based. If we go into the network and we scroll down to the bottom, this is where we have the IPv6 settings. So we have the interface type, so you can select none if you want to switch it off. Prefix delegation, if that's what you have coming from your ISP, but we don't have that. So we have a static address. So I have my gateway IP, my local link IP. And then again, we have the additional IPs which have been added. So should you want to add any additional IPv6 IPs into this network, you can do. That's no problem as well. For client assignments, you have a couple of options. You have SLAAC or DHCPv6, and then you can populate the start and stop, whatever, however you want to populate that. That's right there. And then we have auto DNS server, or you can specify a DNS server. And we have router advertisement. And you have the priority low, medium, or high, and allow SLAAC. Now, one thing I haven't found yet, which probably might not be needed at this point, is to be able to create a full just IPv6 network. You have to have it linked with your IPv4 one. Now, that, that being said, not everything out there in the world is contactable via IPv6. So there may be legitimate reasons for this. I'm still on my learning journey for IPv6. So I'm starting to wrap my head around some of the concepts and how it differs from IPv4. But 
For those of you that already are using IPv6 quite heavily, let me know down in the comments what is missing from your Unify setup, what is missing from Unify Network to give you the best IPv6 experience. If you want to see a video on how I got my IPv6 network up and running on Unify Network, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can put something together. And now we have the IPv6 connected on the network, we can just type in ipconfig. And then we're greeted with a bunch of addresses on here. Now you're probably wondering what the IPv6 and the temporary address is. This was new to me as well. So these temporary IPv6 addresses are private enhanced addresses that are used for outbound connections. And this obscures your permanent address. So keep that one in mind when you do see them on here. You want to be wondering, well, why is that happening? Well, that's the reason for it. Just to show you that my IPv6 is working on my network, you can see I went to test IPv6.com and it's saying your IPv6 is working and you're online. And if I try the other IPv6 sites, you can see they all connect perfectly fine as well. So all in all, we are starting to get more IPv6 settings in here. And in terms of people that heavily use IPv6 at the moment, it's probably going to make them a lot more happier. I want to know what you think of this update down in the comments below. And as always, I'll bring you more videos as more updates come out. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.